wanted to go over some um some parts of this chapter because I'm I'm noticing some students having some difficulty. Um, this is going to be chapter 20 of your financial and managerial accounting textbook covering budgets, master budgets and budget planning. Um, when you're going through the chapter, uh, the most important thing I think you should get from it is really understanding why it is important to benefit um, to to um to create a budget and the process that's involved. You're going to learn how to, to describe what a master budget is and what the process that they all have to, what that you'll go through in order to prepare one. You're going to also analyze expenses using activity-based budgeting. You're going to prepare um, a component in the master budget and you're going to link those to the entire budgeting process. Again, we're talking about how, why do we use budgets, what are they for, and how to create them. So I, in essence, if you look at this one little spreadsheet here, or this one um, slide here, it's just giving you an overview of the type of things that you'll be looking at when you're going through the chapter. You want to know what the goals and objectives are. You want to be able to communicate that. You want to coordinate your business activities, and then you want to find a basis, find some way to evaluate it against some past results or what you expect to receive in results. And you can also use it to motivate your employees. Um, sometimes the budget is based on performance and they if they do well with their budget they actually probably get raises or bonuses but it also allows um, an organization to um, for, for analysis for the future to give them an idea of what's going on happen or what they think may happen in the future the timing of budgets can very well be an annual one or it could be quarterly and again this is all based on the organization um, and this here is just saying some organizations have quarterly budgets and what these quarterly budgets are uh, this very, 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 very current way of looking at your your past performance and, look at the, and looking forward to your um, your next performance. And organizations use quarterly budgets simply because of the changing environment in which they live. They want a continuous process, a budget that's going to be something that actually helps them over over a period of time in a very re in a very current way that can be changed, modified, and adjusted based on past quarters. A master budget um, will have a the following components. It's going to have the sales, it's going to have the purchases, it's going to have the financial budgets, which is going to be the, the income statement, balance sheet, and probably cash. But then that's going to have a capital expenditures. And we know what capital expenditures is going to be really major projects that they are purchasing, major um, um, projects that they have to um, expend. And they will be preparing for that to find out how much they need, when they need it, and for what type of expenditure. But then they're also going to be um, the selling and genera gener general administrative budgets. And this is just the overhead, really tracking um, what it costs us to have people who's not directly involved in preparing or in generating revenue. And those kind of expenses that don't are not exactly attributable to a specific product or service that they were going to provide. So what you're looking at here is a sales budget. And again, this is going to be based on a quarterly um, period from October to January. And what they are trying to do is show you what we think in terms of sales by unit and what the price is and what our total dollar sales are going to be. And then these three months basically will show you this is what, what we think we're going to receive in sales for these three periods, three months, three months. And that's really what we want to do. Um, it depend and it really doesn't matter if it's a quarterly budget or an annual budget. We want to be able to anticipate, based on the models that we have at the time the budget is prepared, um, whether or not we're going to earn or s expend a certain amount of dollars during a certain period. So a merchandise budget is going to include inventory that needs to be purchased, but it's going to start basically with your ending inventory. It's going to budget where your cost of sales is going to be for the period, and then it's going to subtract from that your beginning inventory. This is going to give you what you think you're going to need to purchase. And this information, again, is used in preparation of the budget or the, purchase, the purchases budget for the, the company. So when you're looking at this chapter and you're thinking, oh, my God, what does this mean? What the budgets are designed to help you understand is the process by which organizations uses a budget to guide what they're going to do in the future. And they use it as a tool to evaluate whether or not they have reached their objectives. If their objective is to grow by 10%, they may use a master budget and break it down and say how they intend to increase their sales, increase their uh, operating, um, their capital expenditures budget, or how they intend to use their um, budgeted amount. Again, it is a tool for strategic planning, for analysis, 
and it could be a, a tool to evaluate the performance of leaders and managers. Here we're looking at a purchases budget, and again, it's based on quarterly based quarterly information, and not all budgets are quarterly. Some are on an annual basis, some are semi-annual. But regardless of the time frame, you are looking at what they anticipate is what they think they're going to sell, what they believe their ending inventory percentage is. And again, they don't just throw these numbers out there. They use it based on past experience, on, on, on the past, basically. Using the past as a guide to see whether or not the future will be trending in the same way. So what they're doing is they're projecting what they think their budgeted ending inventory is going to be. And they're trying to make, make a, an educated guess as to what the cost would be so that they don't know what they'll need to spend if they in achieve the inventory and the sales that they're thinking that they're going to achieve. This one is a selling expense budget. And again, we're talking about known numbers like the commission rate may be known, the salary for the managers may be known, but what we are now we don't know is we're going to plug in what we think the sales are and let those numbers run through in our spreadsheet. So we know that we have salaried employees and we know what their salary is going to be for the next three months and we know our commission um, employees are paid at a 10% rate. So the only real guess here is going to be what, I, what we think the sales are going to be. And again, if you look at this budget, it's going to be based on a number of components, our organization or your organization trying to guess based on limited information um, how much it would cost us to, to um, maintain our current level of employees based on the number of sales that we think we're going to achieve during a period of time. And the general administrative budget is going to be pretty much the same way. These expenses generally are not attributable to any specific product, but they are the cost of doing business. And they're called, and there are more administrative salaries or depreciation for various equipment items. Financial budgets really are based on, again, the financial statements and on the balance sheet and cash budgets. What do we expect to receive in cash? What do we expect to pay out? These are forecasts. They are allowing organizations to get an idea about what the future would look like. Now, we know we don't know what the future looks like, and all estimates are generally obviously wrong, but we're going to make educated guesses so that we can plan. And it's all about being able to plan for future expenses, planning for a future um, um, capital outlay, or whether or not we need to expand our organization. Whatever the reason for the budget, these budget items are supposed to give us a good guess as to what our organization will look like, whether it be for our financial budgets or whether it be for our administrative budgets or for our sales. Where do we, what do we look like if we assume certain things, holding everything else constant, what would we look like? Can we afford to do this? Can we make this change? And it all is about strategic planning for an organization. When you budget your cash, you generally want to make certain that you have enough money to meet your expenses. But some organizations use it for planning because they want to be able to know if they can expand or purchase capital equipment. They are reaching an age where the equipment needs to be replaced. So a, a, a cash receipt, a cash budget will absolutely, absolutely let you know if you can um, make this change or make these m major capital purchases. They, it begins with budgeting your cash receipt. And, and again, you're talking about Harvey Dens, and Harvey Dens is saying, well, we generally know that 40% of our sales are going to be cash, and we know a good part, which is 60% of our credit sales are going to be collected in full the very following month. This is based on historical information. And it's a good idea to use historical information because it's pretty much something I, you can say we know has happened, and it's not unreasonable to think if nothing else unusual happens that we can rely on the fact that if it happened in the past, we will have the same in the future. But what we want to do in the end of the day is that what we know to be a fact and what we can reasonably estimate, can we determine based on that information whether or not we will have sufficient cash receipts to, make, to meet our expenses or to um, cover some um, expense that we are, intent and we are anticipating having to spend. And this is just a cash um, receipts budget. And it doesn't have to be on a quarterly basis, but it does make it easy to understand and to grasp when you're doing it month by month versus doing an, an annual projection. And I would say it would be probably more accurate the, the more close it is to current numbers or reality than farther away. So farther away budgets are going to be less likely to be as accurate. And it, does, it really does depend on um, the estimates that are used. 
but what we want to do is show how can we estimate what our cash receipts will be given some assumptions and our accounts receivable and our sales. And this is what this um, worksheet um, shows. The same is true for disbursements. And we want to make certain that we have sufficient um, inventory to meet the demands of our customers. So we have to make certain that we can estimate what we are going to spend on purchases based on what we believe to be the inventory, um, our estimated inventory level. Now, here is just a good an idea of what you've paid in the past for your merchandise or your for your organization. And again, what we think we're going to spend is not what we actually will spend. It's a good guess based on some assumptions on what kind of customers that we're going to receive, the cash receipts that are going to come in based on that, and any expected ex any expected expenditures that will go out. What we want to do is get a good idea of what we think we're going to spend on purchases for a period of time. So if we assume then that we have a cash budget in place and it gives us pretty much a good idea of what we're going to spend or what we're going to receive and what we're going to spend for the period, then you can then you'll have enough information to make decisions. And it's all about making decisions, really. We want to know if we can do, um, if we can expand, do we need to expand? Do we have the sufficient cash to cover our expenses? Do we have sufficient cash to grow um, to capital um, expenditures? And a cash budget, um, the operation budget, which is going to be the sales budget and also the purchases budget, is going to really tie together um, answering those types of questions. So it's more or less not the formality of creating the, the budgets, but understanding what they mean and what they are used to help management decide, whether it be a cash budget, whether it be a, a disbursements budget, for example, whether it be for um, selling expenses a budget. We are just trying to take some information and determine how we're going to best move the organization forward given limited information and given some assumptions that we are making about our particular organization and where we intend to try to move forward. So if you have some assumptions in, in place, you know that, for example, in this case here, they want to maintain $20,000. So having a cash budget will help an organization determine if they need to borrow. Um, some organizations use borrowing as a means of maintaining their cash flow, which is a good thing. So a cash budget is going to be important because you're going to know if you have only a certain amount of money in your bank account and you need ongoing cash to operate, knowing how to anticipate loan or installment loan drawdowns is going to be important, and thus a cash budget is going to be something that you may be able to use. As you can see here, additional borrowing will be needed in the month of October simply because they want to maintain a $20,000 cash balance. And all of this, again, is all about the organization and the managers and what they believe is their threshold of cash, what they need to have in their, cash, in their bank account at any given time. So here is just a, a, good, a good overview of a cash budget and all of the items that are included in that. Again, it's not about being sophisticated in terms of how this spreadsheet is created. It really matters what these numbers are giving you and how to interpret them to make the best decisions. Another example of a cash budget. And again, how do we maintain our $20,000 in cash? How do we make certain that we make we make payments timely to our um, to the to the bank and also meet our other expenses for sales and other administrative personnel costs? Here is the budgeted income statement, and this basically is saying if we were to assume certain things, meaning the number of units that we're going to sell and the, the cost that we're going to incur as a result of that, this is how much money our this is what our income statement would look like. So it's basically giving you an estimated, assumed income statement. Now, these numbers are not actual, but you can use this as a base, and then you can say compare the budgeted to the actual to see if your assumptions were correct. And if your assumptions were incorrect by a material amount, you can go back and reevaluate your assumption. This is basically an income statement with not actual numbers, but with budgeted numbers. The same is true for balance sheets.
what we want to do is for certain items on the balance sheet, we want to be able to, to, to tell if we can use our, I would say, our best guess to see if we had this balance sheet and our assumptions were correct and they were placed in the balance sheet as if they were actual, what would our balance sheet look like at the end of the period? It's all it is to say, if we have these assumptions in our balance sheet, well, whether or not our balance sheet is going to be accurate, you know, based on actual, is not really all the point. The point is saying, what would it look like if? What would it look like if we did this? What would our balance sheet look like if we did that? How does it compare to what we've done in the past? And can it be relied upon to, to anticipate what will happen in the future? And these are just the items that I'm highlighting that are based on their budget from the various different um, budgets. Now, activity-based budget is based on activities rather than salaries. An activity could be, it, it could be almost anything. We're just taking one specific activity and budgeting what we think will be um, the costs that are incurred for that activity. And on this, on this particular slide, I'm just giving you a comparison between the two different budgets. One is a traditional budget based on category, um, typically from your general ledger, and these are just on activities, meaning um, the activity could be on auditing or tax reporting or financial reporting or cost accounting. It's different activities within the organization versus categories closer li closely, li closely linked to the, um, the general ledger of your accounting, um, your, your general ledger of your financial statements. So activity is very, very specific to, um, very, very specific, and then activity is going to be based on some grouping that is really specific to an area that you want to look at. In this case, we're looking at the accounting department, and these are the different areas within the accounting department that make up the total amount of cost. But then if you look on the other side, the cost stays the same as $224,000, but instead of it being broken up by the activities that each one of these individuals in the department um, perform, it is actually based on the sales, the salaries for the individuals, the supplies, and um, et cetera, to get the job done. Depreciation maybe possibly on um, computers or other type of equipment that they need in order to run this department, and their portion of the utility um, costs associated with the individuals in that particular office. So um, the budgeting process really is about estimating, estimating whether or not cash is going to be received in a certain amount in a certain way over a period of time based on some assumptions, or how you're going to anticipate spending uh, within a particular department or a particular area. How do you anticipate sales? What do you think sales are going to look like? And based on, on a total master budget, whether or not the sales and the revenue are going to look a certain way by creating this forecasted or budgeted financial statement. So we're going to assume that if our budgeting is accurate, this is what our income statement will look like. This is what our balance sheet will look like. And I believe that's the most important part about this chapter because the mechanics of putting the numbers on these spreadsheets is most it, it's important only with respect to understanding what is important in each cell. But what's more important is how is, it, is this information used and what type of information that does it provide the user depending on the budget that we're being that's being reviewed. So I would like to, the next um, video will be to demonstrate the preparation of a cash budget. For now, I just wanted to go over some of the key points that I think are important with this chapter and what I believe you should glean um, from the information that you have read in your text. Thank you very much for listening.